Christ, seen him in the flesh. There are no apostles walking around down here right now in the sense that they were apostles then. So uh, he writes this letter under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost to the Philippians, and he had led most of these people. The Lord started these churches, and here's what he said to them, and this is what I'd like to say to you this morning. I'm, as I said earlier, I'm not real good at, at taking compliments. I just don't do good with it. I like it, of course, like anybody does, but I, I don't know how to act when people say something nice about me. I do know how to act when they say something bad about me. I just I say, well, they don't know no better. Uh, but but when, when they say something nice about me, I have a hard time responding right. And uh, so here's what I'm going to do this morning. I'm going to talk about how much I, as the pastor, appreciate our church. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 7. Even as it is meat, that equal meat, something meets together, for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye are all partakers of my grace. For God is my record, how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. He said in verse 7, I've got you in my heart. You're in my heart. And then he says, I long after you greatly. And I want to preach this morning on the subject of pastor's heart. To be a pastor, I heard them say when I first got saved, you got to have a pastor's heart. I didn't know what that meant then. I, I thought it sounded good, and I didn't have it then. But as the years went by, the Lord gave me a pastor's heart. And then I read these verses like this where Paul told these people, he said, you're in my heart. This isn't just a job. This isn't just something I do for a living. He said, I have y'all in my heart. And I want to say this morning, Shining Light Baptist Church, you're in my heart. I have you in my heart. I long for what's best for you and every family in this church. And I'm going to tell you this morning how I appreciate you. See how you like it, okay? Number one, I want to say this morning, I appreciate a church that believes the Bible. It's a blessing. It's a blessing for me week after week after week to have the honor and privilege of standing up here and opening this Bible to any place, any book, and any passage and preach anything it says and not have to worry about a group of a committee meeting me this evening and saying, you can't preach that no more. That's a blessing. I want y'all to know I appreciate that this morning. I appreciate y'all because I don't have to worry. Say, well, this is in the Bible. Boy, I better not preach that at our church. Oh, yeah. I don't ever feel like that. I don't feel like I love our church. Listen, a man can get up here and preach anything in this if he preach it right, and we'll take it, right? And, and you've been trained to do that. I was trained to do that, and you should be too. There should never be a, a doctrine or a part of the Bible that you say, well, we don't believe that at this church. Listen, buddy, uh, the, the Baptist ain't the final authority in this church. The preacher ain't the final authority in this church. The Bible is the final authority in this church. I mean, uh, we all know that the Bible teaches. Uh, uh, no, nobody, nobody ever has to come to my office and, or comes to my office and say, uh, preacher, we had a little problem with what you preached last Sunday, and my aunt was here and she didn't like it. That never happens. Now, that last part does. My aunt was here and she didn't like it. Uh, but uh, that happens uh, on a regular basis. But uh, nobody ever comes and say, uh, you can't preach that no more. It's not, I don't care if it is in the Bible. That never happens here. Praise God. I can preach there is one God. And everybody in this church, uh, it will take it. There's, he's eternally existent in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He, I can preach that the Lord Jesus Christ, death on the cross, burial in the tomb, resurrection on the third day is the only way 
to God and to meet God and never worry about multiculturalism or extending rights to other religions or uh, all religions are the same. I don't have to worry about that here. And I appreciate that, y'all. I appreciate that I can stand up here and say, Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven and not have to worry about this church. Uh, I'm glad I can preach that heaven is real. I'm glad I can preach that there is a real heaven and that people really go there and our loved ones are waiting on us over yonder and we're going to see them all one day. I'm glad I can preach that here in this church. You know, there are churches that don't believe that. There are churches that believe heaven's a state of mind. I'm glad I can preach on hell and nobody in this church come up and say, no, we don't, we don't allow, allow that priest at this church. Uh, the same Bible said there's a heaven, said there's a hell. You ever notice these preachers in churches that won't say the word hell, they say Hades and Sheol and Tartarus and Gehenna. Those are four, three Hebrew words and one Greek word that's translated hell. And uh, they never say the Greek word for heaven. They say heaven. But when it comes to Greek, uh, the hell, they want to use all these other words. You know why? Might offend somebody. Might cut off some money. Somebody might not contribute. It might cut off some of our big givers. Not here at Shining Light. Listen, if a preacher won't preach on hell, you ought to run him off. Amen. Amen. And me, if something happens to me and you get another preacher and he says, I ain't preaching on hell, say, send him on down the road, brother. He ain't a Bible preacher. If he's a preacher, what do you want a Bible, what do you want a preacher for if a preacher don't preach the Bible? Oh, you say, well, I don't like it when he gets on me. What, why do you even go to church? It's supposed to get on you once in a while. I wouldn't give you a dime for a preacher that didn't step on my toes and make me feel a little bit guilty and make me feel bad so I can move up a little bit. Amen? I'm glad that I can preach that. Number two, I'm going to tell you something else. I appreciate Shining Light Baptist Church because we have a church that is teachable. That's That's important. That's important. This church is not filled with a bunch of spiritual know-it-alls that nobody can tell them nothing. And that's good. We're all students of the Bible. If I'm wrong on something and a guy gets up here and he takes the Bible and shows me where I'm wrong, I ought to say, hey, okay, I see it now. You're right. What I believe is wrong. All right, we got a church like that. We got a church like that that's teachable. What a blessing, y'all. What a blessing. I had a guy uh, come, he used to come to church one time, not, the, not this church, another church in Marion. And uh, he was one of these guys, he had done, went off and got him an education, thought he knew everything. Well, every Sunday, I could feel him critiquing me. I could feel it because he'd come up and he'd say little things, little things like, well, uh, uh, you said this and you said that. And I, and I thought, instead of trying to get a blessing, he thought, Here's what he thought, basically. He thought, I'm smart, he's a dumb hillbilly, and I can show him where he's wrong. Well, one Sunday I said something about uh, Jonah and the whale, and Jonah and the whale, and Jonah swallowed, uh, uh, Jonah swallowed the whale. Uh, and uh, I didn't say that. But I told that story, you know, and everything. If the Bible said he swallowed it, I'd believe it. But, uh, uh, but anyway, I said uh, the whale swallowed Jonah, and he come up after church, and he said, uh, he said Pastor, uh, I meant to tell you, it doesn't say whale. It says it was a great fish. And um, I just let him talk and show his ignorance. And uh, he got because all the way through the book of Jonah, it does say a great fish. And it was a great fish. Not great like wonderful, great like big. Uh, great, uh, uh, a, a great fish. And I said, uh, I just took my Bible and I turned to Matthew 12, 40. And it said, Jesus said, as Jonah was in the whale's belly. So right there it says the whale. Jesus says the whale. And he just said, oh, well, it does say that, don't it? And turned around and looked at him. I went, yes, I got it. I, I shouldn't have felt like that, but I did. I, 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 and, and, and then he tried to tell me that everybody's going to be saved, going to be saved, and he's a Calvinist, and, and uh, God doesn't have it all picked out from the foundation of the world. And I said, well, why do you even witness? And he said, because we're supposed to. I said, but it don't make no difference. They're all going to be saved anyway. That's right. I mean, he screwed up as a Chinese fire drill on his beliefs. And, brother, he, 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 had, uh, uh, he, he kept telling me, he, he said uh, this, said that. And I've noticed that a lot of these preachers, I hear them on the radio and stuff, and they say, a great fish, a great fish. And I thought, them guys are scared to death of science. They're scared. They're afraid that they're going to seem unscientific because science give another definition to a word that the Bible gives a definition to. I'm going to tell you right now, at our church, we take the Bible definition of a word. And if Jesus Christ said it was a whale, brother, it's a whale. And all God's people said, 
You say, well, the, the science says a whale's not a fish and it's a great, great mammal. And all that. I know, but your Bible said it's a whale and it was great. I'm telling you. Just because they changed the definition of a word like gay or something like that does not mean we abandon the real definition of the word. And uh, it was a different kind of fish, but it is a big fish. Stuff like that. I'm telling you, brother, uh, we have a church that likes the Word of God. I've heard them say, I've heard them preach on there and say, now we have these crosses. It wasn't really a cross. It was a tree. It was a tree. It was just a piece of wood, and they nailed his hands up here like this and all that. You know why we believe it's a cross? Because the Bible says it was a cross. People, say, uh, people ask me a lot of times. They'll say, Brother Danny, I just love it when you teach on this subject. I just love it when you teach on that subject. Man, I appreciate a church like that. I appreciate it. I mentioned the kingdom of God and kingdom of heaven here Wednesday night, a few Wednesday nights ago. And people said, uh, oh, let's study that. I love that. Let's study that. Let's enjoy that. Teach about that, Brother Danny. Teach that they were two separate except when Jesus was here. They were both here. And when Adam had them, they were both here. But then there was no kingdom of, of uh, heaven or kingdom of God all the way through that Old Testament to Jeconiah, the last king. And then there was no kingdom of heaven during that time when Israel was in exile and then they come back and Jesus the king was here there was kingdom of God and kingdom of heaven while he was here and right now there ain't no kingdom of heaven just kingdom of God spiritual but one day the kingdom of heaven's coming stuff that's over and over and over and over Bible doctrine amen Bible doctrine you know what that does that this thinks us from the world we don't just come to church we believe what we believe and we've got a reason for what we believe I believe we're all on the same team. We don't agree on every little thing. I don't think we should. We don't, I mean, that ain't, that ain't going to happen. But I'm talking about the main things the Bible teaches. We agree. I heard about this uh, it was Halloween one time in this little old country church. And these old people, they've been playing church for years and years and years. And it was Halloween one night. And this guy was going to a Halloween party. And it just so happened it was a church night, and all in the little country, people's in that little country church that night, just a little handful of them in there, and there's a praise in the Lord, you know. And, 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 and this guy was going to a Halloween party as the devil. And he had on his devil suit and dressed up, and he's walking up the road. And it come lightning, thunder, and storm, off a storm ever was. And he looked like he's getting soaking wet. Well, he just run over there and opened the back door of that little church and just run right in that little church. And it was thunder and lightning outside and the devil comes running in. And Lord, they went out the windows and out the back door and the front door and there's a screaming and hollering and grabbing the youngins and all that. And they said everybody run out and one of the deacons got his, got his uh, jacket hung on a, on a pew <laughs> right there and he's trying to get loose, trying to get loose. And the devil came in and said, no, no. He said, listen, devil, I've been on your side the whole time. I thought, you know what? <laughs> That's the way a lot of people are. Uh, when they're with you, you're on your side. And when they're out there in the world, they're on their side. And when they're out there in the other world, they're on the other side. I'm glad we got a church, brother, that uh, we know whose side we're on. Yeah. Amen? We know whose side we're on. I've heard them say, well, uh, the, the world, God couldn't have made the world in six days. Every one of those days represents a millions of years. How many of you ever heard that? Raise your hand. Oh, my goodness. People are scared to death. Science is going to prove the Bible wrong. You don't have to worry about it. It ain't going to happen, people. It's not going to happen. Uh, those days weren't uh, millions of years. Well, how do you know? Well, a uh, bunch of ways. One day, because one th reason he said it was a day, and the other reason he said the evening and the morning were the first day. And another reason, if it had been millions of years, there was stuff living on this earth a millions of years before the sunlight showed up on day four. No sunlight. Mm, mm. And you know God established that six and one uh, thing there. You work six days, you're off one. You work six days, you're off one. You know why the whole country goes by that or most of them? Chick-fil-A does, hallelujah. And Kanye, give him a compliment for that. Praise God. Uh, uh, listen, Chick-fil-A, uh, you know why God said work six days and off one, work six days and off one, work, because that was God's plan. for. He, he created six days, and he is off uh, on, on the, the seventh day. And if all them represented a million years, ain't you glad it don't? You'd have had to work six million years. <laughs> You'd have never got a day off. So uh, I'm glad we got a church that's teachable. Amen. I'm glad we got a church that believes about man's past. Where did we come from? How did we get here? God made us. 
Even scientists that are really intelligent today are admitting it couldn't have come from nowhere. It couldn't have. That DNA, and you get into stuff like that in the human mind, and our brains, and our eyes, and our ears, uh, our, our past is uh, our present. What we're doing here, we're serving our future, uh, social problems, all about war. See, we know, we know about war. We know why there is war. We know there's three big wars coming in the future. We know about taxes and paying taxes and submitting to the government. Uh, we know about fathers and mothers and raising children and why we have families and, and marriage. And We know about uh, the sun and the moon. And We know about racial problems and how, how it all got started and what God's answered are. We know about love and, and hate and emotions and anger. We know what, what's right about abortion. We know what's right about saying sex marriages. We know what's right about the future. We know what's right about other things. It's all in that book right there. God fixed that so a common man can have all the answer to man's problems under his arm when he walks in on, on Sunday morning. I'm glad we got a church that's teachable. Amen. One old church up there in the mountains, one of them little country churches where you couldn't tell them nothing. I don't care what he says. I still, think, you know, like that. Uh, a, a lot of them like that. I, I'm, I love country people. I are one. But buddy, let me tell you something. They can be the knot-headedest, stubbornest, bunch of mule-headedest people you ever met in your life, some of them country people. And uh, they had a little church up there in the mountains, and uh, the preacher went up there and took church. So it's a true story. Little bitty one-room church, and I've been to some of them up there, way up here on top of Mountain Burnsville, up toward Boone somewhere, places like that. And they pastor had been there a while, and he said that... Uh, little bitty country church, they have sweet people, but he said, every week when you dismiss for Sunday school, like everybody on this side of the church would move over here and everybody on this side of the church would move over there. He said they did it every Sunday. And he thought, well, you know, whatever, I guess just some kind of custom or something. He asked them, he said, why y'all do that? And one member said, Lord, I don't know, preacher. We, I've been coming here all my life. I don't know why they do it. And so he went to some of the older people. He said, why y'all do that? They said, you know, I don't know. I've been here all my life. My grandma, grandpa, we all did it. And so they got to looking back and went back and went back and went back and in the minutes, you know, and read the minutes and waste the hours and into the documents of the church. And, and you know what they found out? That way back like uh, 1900 or something like that, that was a little bitty one-room church and, and they had a big old wood, hot belly wood stove over here and they'd heat that thing up and everybody get warm. And between Sunday school and preaching, they'd swap sides and they could all get their toes warm during preaching. And the other side said, oh, here and something, them idiots with a heat pump installed. You know, our central air was doing that every Sunday and didn't even know why they did it. And there's, do you be surprised at the churches that say, we always do this, we always do that. We always do this. I'm glad we've got a church that it don't have to be a certain way all the time. We're teachable. I appreciate that. Number three, I'm glad and I appreciate Shining Light Baptist Church because this church takes the Great Commission seriously. We believe in it. What's the Great Commission? Go into all the world and preach the gospel. We take it as our responsibility to get the gospel to everybody in this world. And I believe it. What about all the other churches? Don't worry about all the other churches. That shining light's obligation and duty before God is to get the gospel to every creature in this world. How are we going to get? Me and Kelly went to witness to a guy from Russia. You know, they got all them exchange students and everything over in Gatlinburg. And this guy's walking around taking pictures, and then they try to sell it to you. And uh, when they walk up and say, can I take your picture? Then, oh, you're going to try to sell it to me, ain't you? And uh, they, they actually gave us one, tried to sell us a big one. And we started witness that boy. I said, man, where are you from? And uh, he said, Russia. He said, Russia, something like that. And I, I said, uh, uh, good night, how'd you wind up here? And he said he'd been to Germany and he'd been here and he'd been yonder and he'd been everywhere. And we started witnessing to him. And I said, did you know the Lord Jesus loves you? Did you know he cares about you? Did you know he's the only person that ever died on the cross for you? And, and she said, I said, pray. And she said, do you ever pray? And he said, never prayed, never prayed. And the Lord, we get witness to him and uh, talk to him there for a little bit. The Lord let shining light shine into the heart of a boy from Russia. Now that happens seven days a week. 
24 hours a day, we're preaching somewhere. On the internet, constantly. We, I get emails, or uh, comments from, uh, from uh, England and South Africa and all, all the time. I mean all the time on a weekly basis. I got one letter here. I got a bunch of them. I get these all the time. I want to read this one to you. This comes from Oklahoma. Won't say the name. The young man's probably watching. Brother Danny, I felt led to contribute to Shining Light Bus Ministry. I so appreciate the passion and conviction that you and your church body, that's y'all. See, a preacher can't do that by himself. He's got to have a church that believes in the Great Commission. Thank God we've got one. That could be my kid out there. That could be your kid out there. He says this, it chokes me up when you speak about your bus ministry and give the periodic presentations about it. It's a fact. The bus ministry like Shining Light could very well be the only introduction to the Lord Jesus Christ many of these precious kids might ever have in their life before they're led down a path of destruction, a light path. There are not many churches left that are so committed to a bus ministry like yours that strives week after week without fail. Thank you. If the Lord Jesus should tarry his coming, uh, we plan to take a vacation to your region of the country next year and see the Ark Encounter, Nashville, Gatlinburg, and one of the uh, highlights will be to visit Shining Light Baptist Church. Uh, I'm telling you this morning, people, people, and the you know, I'm glad we got a church that takes the Great Commission seriously. I'm glad we had a church where people got up this morning at 6 o'clock and got ready and got on an old ice cold bus and, there, and there's over a hundred. I said there's over a hundred of them here this morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm glad to be a part of a church that believes in the great commission of the Lord Jesus Christ. Was that you, Frank? Amen. I told you, he better amen me. Amen, Frankster. He the Frank, sir. But I'm going to tell you something this morning. I'm glad we've got it. I'm glad we've got it. Now, grant you, we don't all have everybody in here that witnesses in a conventional way. Every church got some crazy people. Every church got crazy people. We just seem to have more than <laughs> <laughs> and, and they say you attract what you are I don't know what that says about me uh, but uh, uh, I, I, but I, I thank God for everyone if they'll get out and witness for God I got more respect for them the man that has a PhD it won't witness that old boy down there in, he's down there in Florida and they said there's this man run a, run a, a, a business like a hardware store and the guy they couldn't, nobody could give him to church the preacher tried to get him everybody tried to get him he wouldn't come to church nobody could witness to it one day this old guy who was like a little bit, a few bricks having a full load. Uh, you know, it wasn't exactly down in the middle. He went in there, and that guy was running that store, and he said, Hey! And that guy said, Yes, sir, can I help you? He said, You want to go to heaven? And the guy said, No. Get out of here. He said, We're going to hell then. Turned around and walked out the door. <laughs> that was his witness. And he said, he said, lo and behold, two days later, the pastor's phone rang. It was that guy. He said, Pastor, one of your parishioners here the other day and told me I, to go to hell. <laughs> he said, I've never heard it put that way before. <laughs> and the guy got saved. The guy got saved, amen. Hallelujah. Don't tell me God can't use a little kid out on a bus route. Don't, hey, he, he uses Marty. He uses Frankie. He uses Ethan. He uses all these kids that go out week after week after week after week after week after week. Listen, we may not always be able to do this. The law, they may shut us down before it's over with. They may, they may pass laws that you can't run buses that are a certain age. or something. I'm sure that day's coming. But by the grace of God, we'll do it while we can. I'm glad we got a church that believes in that. Amen. If you're sitting there hoping, well, maybe it'll wear off and he'll hush. Uh, you're going to sit in there a while. You're going to be sitting there a while. I want to say, fourthly, I appreciate a church that believes in worship. Bible worship. Amen. Many churches today are overboard one way 
or the other. Now, let me illustrate what I'm going to say. Our church believes in Bible worship. What is Bible worship? In the Bible, here's how they worship God. And you don't have any right, you don't have any right at all to worship in a way that the Bible don't authorize or the way they worship the Bible. Now, if you do it, you're going to answer for it. But you have no right to worship or claim you're worshiping any other way than Bible worship. In the Bible, Old Testament and New, they raised their hands. Right? They sure did. They said amen. Not just the front row. All the people said amen. They did in the Bible. So we know that's, we know that's legitimate and we know that's right in Scripture. In the Bible, they said hallelujah. They said praise the Lord. In the Bible, in Acts chapter number 3, man was healed and he went walking and leaping and praising God. Like hallelujah. I mean, if, if I was crippled all my life and all of a sudden the Lord healed me, I'd go, whoa, hallelujah. Yes, 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 I'm healed. I'm healed, I'm healed. Whoa, you better believe I'd do that. And once in a while, our chair's a little slick there, ain't it? But once in a while, once in a while, just once in a while, it ought to get down in you and think, hey, I was blind, now I see. I was lost and now I'm found. Woo, have a good shout once in a while. That's perfectly in order. And if you go to a church where none of that's ever done, you go to a weird church. You better stay away from them people. They're a cult. <laughs> them quiet churches are cults. Because that ain't Bible worship. Now, there are churches that go overboard. I've seen them jerking around in the floor, barking like dogs. There's nothing like that in the Bible. Let me say this. We ain't got time to teach on this this morning, but there's nowhere in the Bible, listen to me, where anybody worshiped God and fell backwards. There's no such thing as that in the Bible. I, I seen Benny Hinn. He turned around and he went, whoo, and like 50 people just fell out. I ain't trying to be ugly. Maybe his breath's bad. I don't know. Uh, but I thought that 50 people just fell backwards. I felt that before, but it wasn't the Holy Ghost. And a guy used to come to me and his breath stunk terrible and he'd try to talk to me and I'd go like this and he'd try to talk to me and he'd just chase me around like that. I go, <laughs> but that ain't Bible worship. You don't fault nobody worships God on their back in the Bible. Everybody, check me out. You say, well, my grandmother thinks and my mama watches. I'm, I'm not trying to be ugly. I ain't telling you who to like and who not to. I'm just saying in the Bible, they fell on their face. They fell on their face. Check me out. See if I'm right. They fell on their face. To worship God. And if the Lord came in that door right there this morning in the flesh, you know what I'd do? I'd get right down on my face. I wouldn't go, who, who, who do that? You don't do that when some of your kid makes a touchdown. Your kid don't make a touchdown, you don't go, who? Yeah. I'm not trying to be ugly. Please, I'm not making, the only way I can get you to see right is show you what, put them beside each other. <laughs> Listen, my kid made a touchdown, I go, woo, and a boy, get him. It's like the same way I do in church. Same way that I'm rejoicing because I'm going to heaven, right? Yeah. Now, some churches are all bored the other way. It's like this. Like I ain't got time to preach on that. That's all they do. They have to serve coffee enough when they get them up and woke up enough to drive home. I'm glad we got a church that believes in worship. Lastly, I'll say this, and I got, I got a hush. I appreciate our church because, you know what I appreciate about our church? I, our church believes that eternity is what's really important. We live our life, we make our decisions, we pay our bills, we work a job, we put our kids through school, whatever we got to do, but when it's right down to it, everything in this world don't even really matter. All that's going to matter What's up there ahead? I'm starting to see that more and more as I get older and older and older. Shut up. I'll be visiting some of y'all in a rest home before it's over with. But you start, you start seeing as you got less time in front of you than you got behind you. I'm way past halfway, way past halfway. And you start thinking, you know what? It don't really matter. Car clothes, house, I mean, it's okay to have it, nothing wrong with it, and you should try to 
have work good and have nice stuff, but it really don't matter. It really don't matter. We listen. The Bible said, "Set your affection on things above." And you're not. Some of you are not happy this morning because all you can think about is, "I want to get that job. I want to get more money. I want to make. I want to buy this. I want to have a. I want to have a boat. I want to have a, a, nothing wrong with that if God blesses you with it. But don't live your life for stuff. Don't live your life for stuff. Lord have mercy, people. Uh, uh, set your affection on things above. Our light affliction, which is but for a moment, the Bible said, working for us a far more and exceeding eternal weight of glory. Our light affliction, which is but for a moment. And listen, if it's 30 years, that's a moment compared to eternity. If it's 40 years, you have to put up with something. That's that short in the light of eternity. If you have to live your whole life, I, I, a friend of mine in, in prison, he'll probably hear me. He called me from prison the other day down in Louisiana. A, a good young man that loves God and, and he got in some trouble. And, and you know what? I, I, sometimes he gets discouraged. And I can imagine being in prison, being saved, and you think, what have I done? I've wasted my whole life. Listen, not if you're living right, you had not wasted it. Not if you're serving God, you ain't wasted it. You had to stay in prison 50 years, brother. Think about heaven forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Yeah. I like the song that says, When Christ Shall Come with shout of acclamation to take me home. What joy will flood my soul. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, my God, how great thou art. If you'll just live, you think about that, y'all. That's going to happen. That's going to happen. Amen. Someday when life is over, you know, all them songs like that, this modern day church business, all this thing about, he is awesome, I am awesome, you are awesome. No, no, people, you, here's, you know what people used to sing about? Someday when all these toils and troubles and trials are over. It's over there, it ain't here, y'all. It's over there, it ain't here, y'all. It's over there, I point that way because that's where it's at, north. That north of this, of, this, of this world, the sides of the north, the city of the great king. Ladies and gentlemen, when Christ shall come. Ladies and gentlemen, when it's all over, this could be the day. This could be the day that Jesus comes. I'm glad I've got a church and I belong to a church and I get to preach to a church that believes eternity is what's really important. That goes for hell too. If you're here this morning, you're not saved. If you're here this morning and you don't know for a fact you're going to heaven when you leave this world, you got one life. It's going to be over with really, really quick. Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for your sins. And you can be saved right here this morning. If you're here this morning and you don't know you've been saved, you say, Brother Danny, I've always wondered. I don't know if I really have or not. You can sell it. You can leave. I'm glad we've got a church where you can get down on your knees right here and somehow take the Bible and show you exactly what you've got to do to be saved and know it. I'm glad we have a church. I appreciate our church. On this day, I just want you all to know I appreciate you. And my advice to you all, any visitors we have here this morning, come go with us. We're going somewhere. We know exactly what we're doing, and we know exactly where we're going. If I was you, I'd sit down and have a talk about this and join this. That's what I do. I'd join this church if I was y'all. We got, we got it in the right gear. We're headed the right way, and our church is balanced. It's not perfect, but at least we believe right, and we preach right. I appreciate our church for that. Let's stand by our heads for prayer, please. Every head bowed and every eye closed this morning. Christians praying just for a moment. Nobody moving, please, just for a moment. Christians praying. God dealing with your heart this morning. Maybe you're here this morning and you say, Brother Danny, deep, deep down inside, I wish I could be as sure as you talk like you are. I wish I could know that. Well, friend, I'm telling you, you can. You got to trust him and believe it by faith. Not by feeling, by faith. And if there's anybody here this morning who needs to make an old-fashioned trip to the altar, it'd be a good time to do it right now. The devil messed you up, tripped you up, got you all fouled up and all out of the way, why don't you just get down on your knees? Something's coming right now. Come on. Come on right now. Young man, young lady, young couple, mom, dad, boy, girl, teenager. You say, Brother Danny, I want to I I do right. I want to do right. I don't want the devil 
to ruin my life. Come on, come on right now. Come on, come on right now. Others, others, others. Well, you ladies need to come pray over here if you would please. Amen. 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 Let God, let God help you this morning. How about it, sir? How about it, daddy? How about it, mama? You let God speak to your heart this morning. You let God speak to your heart this morning. Will you do that? Will you do it? The Lord will help you if you will. The Lord will help you if you will. Just slide right out of your seat right now. Come on. Come on. Right now. Just come on down here and get down on your knees. Ladies, come. Amen. The little lady, please. Amen. Let God speak to your heart right now. Amen. 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 Come on. Others. 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 Come on right now. Come on right now. Others. Right now. Just slide right out of your seat. Just slide right out of your seat and get down here this morning and say, God, I, I want to make sure. I want to make sure of this thing. I don't want to wake up in hell one day and just guessed at it and thought I was saved. I, I want to I wanna make things right, Lord. I want to make things right. Come on. Come on right now. Come on right now. Come on right now. Let God help you. Let God help you right now. Amen. We're going we're gonna to pray in just a minute and let, we'll let you go. Just a few seconds. Just a few seconds. Come on. Come on. Just a few seconds. We'll tarry just a few seconds. Come on, be with us. Come on, go with us. This church is going somewhere. You ought to go with us. You ought to go with us. You're in the right place. You don't have to worry about being in the right place. You're at the right place. I say that with no, no second guess about it. You're in the right place. Obey God. You obey God. He'll bless you for it. Amen. He'll bless you for it. Some praying. Others need to come. We'll wait just a few seconds while these are praying. Maybe you're here this morning and you've never been saved. You want to be saved. You need to be saved. You come right now and get it up. It, just take that step. He'll save you this morning. Will you come? Come on. He'll save you this morning. Will you come? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Maybe you've been living for God and the devil's throwed you for a loop and you need to get back in here and rededicate your life, get back where you need to be. He'll mess you up. The devil will mess up your life. You give him that much room, buddy, he's in. You won't be able to get him out neither. Easy to get in, hard to get out. The devil will mess you up in a heartbeat if you ain't careful. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This lady rode the bus this morning. Some, somebody come pray with her. What a blessing. Isn't that a blessing, y'all? This lady rode the bus this morning. She's come. That's a blessing. What a blessing. I can't wait till Saturday. Let's all go visiting Saturday. Come on out. 930. Let's go. You'll have fun. You'll have fun. You'll be glad you did. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Just keep praying. Just a few seconds. How, how blessed we are to have a church. You wouldn't believe the emails we get. People say, I'd give anything in the world if we had a church like that where I live. You wouldn't believe it. On a regular basis, it happens all the time. It's a barren desert out there spiritually. Thank God we live around this part of the country where there's churches and preachers everywhere. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Amen. Bless your heart, sister. This lady got saved, y'all. Isn't that a blessing? Bless your heart, honey. No, you're fine. Amen. You came on the bus this morning, did you? God bless you. Isn't that something? She got saved this morning, y'all. Hallelujah. Lord of God. That's worth it, ain't it, Jennifer? Amen. Sandy. Who'd she come with? You show me. Randy? First day driving? 
Driving the bus, they drove one in and got saved. Woo! That's worth getting up early for. Amen. All right. Some still praying right now. Amen. All right. Now, don't forget, tonight I'm going to preach on some words a Christian never has to say. It may get bad, but there's about four things that a Christian never has to say. She got saved too? Tara, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Isn't that a blessing? Nailed it down this morning. Got it right. I was praying. I was praying last night and I said, Lord, please let somebody get saved. Lord, please let somebody get saved. That's what coming to church is all about, seeing people get in. What a blessing. All right, so don't miss tonight. Come back. Come praying. And, uh, and we'll get all right.